Hi friends, welcome back. I'm Elaine and I'm living with autoimmune disease and February is Raynaud's Awareness Month. I'm gonna start this video by telling you I'm probably gonna mispronounce Raynaud's because I'm familiar with calling it Raynaud's, which is incorrect because I just looked up how to pronounce it and I've been pronouncing it wrong for years. So I'm gonna slip up in this video, but when I say Raynaud's, please forgive me and know that I'm talking about Raynaud's. So as autoimmune disease patients, a lot of us probably know what Raynaud's is. I'm curious to know how many of you actually deal with Raynaud's. So if you do, leave me a comment down below and let me know I'm not alone. 90% of scleroderma patients have Raynaud's. And there's two types of Raynaud's. So there is primary Raynaud's and secondary Raynaud's. All right, now you clicked on this video and you're like, well, okay, that's great, but what is it? Raynaud's is a problem in the vascular system. It's directly related to cold temperatures. It can happen with stress, both physical and emotional. It causes like a blood loss to the affected area. There's many affected areas of Raynaud's. So specifically for me, my lips are affected, my fingers are affected, and my toes are affected. However, a lot of patients have other areas that are affected as well. So let me tell you how I first came to know that I have Raynaud's. I've had autoimmune disease for about 14 years. I've always had a levito reticularis patterning, which is kind of a lace-like patterning on the skin, but it's not Raynaud's. So February of 2015, my husband and I were grocery shopping. Now, why do I know we were grocery shopping? Because we were in the freezer section of the grocery store when my husband looked at me and said, your lips are blue. And I said, my lips are blue. And he's like, did you eat a candy or something? And I said, no. And he said, are you breathing okay? I was like, yeah. Come to find out, that was the first experience I had with rain nodes. Next appointment with my rheumatologist, I explained to him that my lips were turning blue and I was kind of worried about my, my lungs or my pulmonary function because why else would my lips be turning blue? I am a kid who grew up with an asthmatic mother and so I know when you don't get oxygen and you don't get air, your lips will turn blue. I thought I was having some kind of lung problem. He started to ask me about my fingers and at that time my fingers were just getting really painful when I was touching things that were cold in the freezer section, but they weren't turning any specific color. So I explained to him that I didn't see anything like on my fingers, that things were a little bit cold, but that was short lived because my fingers soon followed as did my toes. So what does Raynaud's look like? My rheumatologist described it as very patriotic, red, white, and blue. It can be any of those colors. My fingers specifically turn white and red. My fingers don't specifically turn blue, but my palm down by my thumb will turn blue. So if you remember, I told you there's primary Raynaud's and secondary Raynaud's. Primary Raynaud's happens to people with no underlining condition of an autoimmune disease. So for them, it is just something that happens. It usually happens when people are younger, between 15 and 25 and they don't have actually like a severe form of Raynaud's. So they're not going to get a lot of like ulcers or um, losing like digits due to the Raynaud's. Secondary Raynaud's happens with people that have autoimmune or connective tissue problems. So people that have rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, scleroderma, Sjogren's. So in other words, it happens because you have this other thing. To be completely honest, I'm a patient that lives in Southern California. It does not get very cold here. Although it's a little bit cold now, but I'm not dealing with Raynaud's the way that a patient in like Nebraska is dealing with it. They don't have a lot of ulcers and uh, I don't have any digit loss. You might be wondering how in the world is my doctor gonna know that I have Raynaud's? Is there a specific test for it? Oh, it's mainly a patient's experience. A doctor is going to ask you about experience with getting in the freezer at home, how it is when you're in cold situations. I'm gonna ask you about color changes 
And for me, you can actually put my hand under cold water and watch it turn blue. So it's pretty evident. The doctor can also do a nail capillary test, which will be specific for Reyna's diagnosis. If you have one, they can see that your capillaries look different. I wanted to share some tips and tricks of what I do to deal with it. Now my tips and tricks are for me living in Southern California. Obviously, if you live in a colder climate and you have some tips and tricks that are probably better than mine, leave them down below because I think sharing our tips and tricks amongst each other really can help other patients. First of all, mittens are our friends. Uh, gloves, mittens, whatever you want to use are our friends. So these are just cotton gloves and I think that using these underneath, I, I layer sometimes if it's really cold. So I'll put these underneath like other gloves, like my winter gloves that are thicker, um, that have more of a lining in them. But I like to layer things. I find it helpful even when I'm in the house trying to get in the refrigerator or the freezer, I'll put on some gloves because the other thing about Raynaud's is it's extremely painful. So if you don't experience it, the best I can explain it to you is it's a, like a burning sensation. Now, some patients feel pins and needles. For me, it's a burning sensation. It literally feels like my fingers are so cold that they're like, it's what I could describe what maybe hypothermia feels like, or it feels like my fingers are actually burning off, like touching dry ice or something. And it's extremely painful. Other thing I like to do too, is when I'm washing my hands, turn the water on and kind of put it to warm and wait for it to warm up so that I'm not submerging my hands in cold water. Other thing I find helpful, and this is actually something I learned in a support group because somebody suggested it there. Instant little pocket heaters and insert a picture here so that you can see what I'm talking about. You take these out, you break them up, they warm up, you stick them in your pockets. Um, they can work in your pockets so when you're outside you can put your hands in your pockets and can kind of warm them up. I'm thankful for the support group member that suggested that. They're on Amazon, but some members say they find them at the dollar store. You can find them at camping stores. I talk about layering. Sometimes I have to wear two or three pairs of socks. I find that wool socks are really great because they keep your feet really warm. Uh, I'm a person that has to wear socks even in the house. Also, there's medications used to manage Raynaud's. So if your Raynaud's is very problematic or beginning to be an issue with ulcers and things like that, your rheumatologist may prescribe, I know it sounds weird, Viagra. Now, why do they prescribe Viagra? Now, I had to ask, like, why in the world would you prescribe that to me? It's because it opens blood vessels and Raynaud's is a blood vessel problem. So the Viagra opens the blood vessels in your digits and areas so that it gets blood flow even when it's cold. Kind of makes sense. There's some other um, prescriptions and medications that can be used. That's something that you can discuss with your rheumatologist or whoever your specialist is that's managing your primary condition that might be causing the secondary Raynaud's. So that's really my Raynaud's experience and that's really the tips I have and that's really the best explanation I can give you for it. Again, I'm only a patient. I am not a doctor, I'm not anything in the medical field and I really just wanted to talk about my experience with Raynaud's and what I've learned to be helpful. But again, if you're a patient with Raynaud's, you have any tips or tricks for management of it, leave a comment down below. That way we can all share with each other. If you like this video and discussing the secondary conditions that I have, give it a thumbs up. If you are curious about any other secondary conditions to primary autoimmune disease, or you're curious if I have any other secondary conditions to my 
primary autoimmune diseases, leave me a comment down below. I can always discuss those in the future. To the viewer who wanted me to discuss Raynaud's, uh, I hope this helped and thank you for that question. If you haven't yet subscribed and you would like to come along on my adventure, I would love to have you. The more friends, the more better. Please hit the subscribe button. My adventure is sometimes medical and sometimes fun. And until my next adventure, go have yours.